Welcome to lecture 5 of video course on travelogy. The topic of this lecture is friction and instability. It is very interesting topic. Friction causing instability or causing instable system, introducing some sort of disturbance, some sort of a continuous vibration phenomena or jerk phenomena we will be studying in this topic uh, detail of why friction instability happens and how we can avoid it. To start with that we will take one example related to our previous lectures and the example uh, as I am shown in the slide says that determine coefficient of friction between two smooth surfaces. So, when we are using the word smooth surface that means surface roughness is negligible or in other word coefficient of friction due to employing effect will be negligible. We can neglect that and we can consider only coefficient of friction due to adhesion or junction growth. Here we have defined the two surfaces uh, one is made of aluminum and other is made of steel. Three conditions have been defined the dry oily and semi solid lubricated. Solid lubricated may be uh, in this case we can say there is a powder lubrication molybdenum disulfide or some Teflon related coating on that. In addition to this data shear strength of steel is given that is a 300 mega Pascal and shear strength of aluminum is defined as a 100 mega Pascal. So, aluminum will govern the behavior of this triple pair. As we have learned, shear strength of weak material need to be accounted. So, we can say the shear strength of aluminum will be considered that will be 100 mega Pascal and shear strength of steel which is defined as a 300 mega Pascal will not be utilized for our expressions. <coughs> then in addition to this we have data related to interface shear strength which is a 2 mega Pascal, 0 0.150 mega Pascal, 0 0.05 pas uh, mega Pascal and the dry solid lubricated and oil lubricated condition. From this example it is clear that oil lubricated condition will give minimum shear strength of the interface and dry contact will give the maximum shear strength of the interface. So, we can utilize formula which we derived in a previous lecture that mu due to addition or junction growth is equal to 0.5 divided by square root of the ratio of shear strength of uh, weaker material to shear strength of interface. As we have mentioned in previous lecture we discussed in previous lecture that this ratio decides what will be the coefficient of friction. It is not an absolute material shear strength which decide, but the ratio of interface shear strength to bulk modular uh, bulk shear strength of material is going to decide what will be the overall shear is, uh, overall uh, coefficient of friction due to junction growth. If I take this ratio the tau y by tau i that means 100, 100 mega Pascal divided by 2 mega Pascal. So, that gives me 50 value that means this ratio tau y by tau i for um, solid lubricant uh, for dry condition is 50 and this ratio for solid lubricated surface is 667 not very different not very much different in this case and while uh, for all lubricated case is turning out to be 2000. Using this ratio value we can find our coefficient of friction is turn out to be 0 0.01 for dry case 0 0.00075 for solid lubricated case and 0 0.0025 for all lubricated case. I can interpret this result in three ways. First thing is that dry lubrication gives a high coefficient of friction and 
Second thing is that getting coefficient of friction equal to 0 0.00075 does not mean much, it will not really waste much power. So, these are the hypothetical values. Third interpretation can come that as a coefficient of friction is very low, I can choose even the dry contact if I see uh, if I go through overall economic point of view, if I consider the cost of a lubrication mechanism of lubrication and accessories which are required for the lubrication mechanisms. I can reject second and third option, I can say that 0 0.01 is coefficient of friction is very very low, we can go tolerate this, we can go ahead with this, but there is a problem. Problem is that whenever there is a dry lubrication case, there will be more variation in a steady coefficient of friction and kinetic coefficient of friction that will bring or that will induce instability. That is what we are going to describe in uh, today's lecture, we are going to discuss in today's lecture. So, we can say friction induced vibration is an instability or vibration we are uh, using the word. This is coming because of the static and kinetic friction coefficient or difference between static and kinetic friction coefficients and this difference is initiating a stick slip process. How? We are saying that any time velocity of the object or instantaneous velocity of the object does not remain close to the average velocity that means, there is a continuous fluctuation in velocity sometimes is moving uh, at a higher speed compared to mean speed sometimes the lower speed and that kind of uh, variation in velocity will introduce vibration phenomena. And if vibration phenomena have some lack in the damping then instability is bound <coughs> to come. These uh, phenomena are often uh, known as the shock phenomena. But we are trying to uh, uh, get a feel from that. Sometimes material is in a contact and sometimes it is not there. So, there is a continuous jump phenomena, shock phenomena, which is keep going on as a one surface moves related to other surface. And this is very, very common in the braking or we say the brake shoe and disc, brake uh, shoe and drum. This is a very common phenomenon. That's why the noisy uh, noise uh, emit uh, in gets induced when we apply brake due to variation in velocity. We are suddenly getting slipped, and that's why the noise comes, chirpy noise comes, which is many times uh, intolerable. That's why the many we when we design good brakes, we try to keep this in our mind. This kind of noise should not be there or if it is there it should be at very very low level. We try to design brake uh, break and brake material from that angle that minimum noise should be generated when we are applying brake when we are trying to stop vehicle or we are trying to stop wheel. It largely depends the rate of the friction force at which rate friction force is applied. Is it applied very fast is applied gradually that decides whether there will be friction instability or not. To elaborate this, I am just showing a couple of results which uh, we have done experiments on um, one brake material, what we use a brake material as a magneto rheological uh, uh, liquid as a brake material. Good thing about MR fluid or magneto rheological fluid is it gets solidified in just a few milliseconds and due to the solidification coefficient of friction will increase significantly. We say coefficient of friction from 0.1 it can reach to 0.6 in 10 millisecond which gives a breaking torque or which uh, uh, give the uh, resistance against the movement. But what is the problem with this? So, when we used uh, 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 we when we uh, perform experiment on MR brake what we got at the lowest speed coefficient of friction was very high or torque resistance capacity of that brake was very high. You can say that here the blue line, pink line, yellow line and the green line. What we are showing here the uh, blue line is for 0, 0 ampere that means, there is no magnetic field generated in MR brake. While well, the point 2 some magnetic field was generated which chained up the liquid converted liquid 
uh, particulate or liquid to some semi solid low shear strength semi solid. When you apply current 0.4 ampere it turned out to be moderate level and 0.6 ampere is a very high and a good uh, torque resistance capabilities. You can see the torque capabilities um, at the 0.6 ampere of the MR brake was almost 75 Newton meter at the negligible speed. But as speed is increasing at the rotational speed where the brake was applied increases we are able to see that there is a continuous decrease in torque or resistant torque offered by the brake. It reaches to the minimum value at some speed in the here it is shown around roughly 250 to 60 rpm it shows the minimum value and after that it reaches to the steady value. After there is a 400 onward fluctuation are negligible. So, it is a problem there is particularly when operating is speed is nearby 260 may say within the range from 200 to 300 there is a possibility of friction instability coefficient of friction does not remain stable it keeps changing from one value to other value and that is a dangerous that makes a lot of noise which should be avoided as far as possible. And in this case particularly if the we are uh, operating at the brake at the lower than this speed very high coefficient of friction and may be quite possible a jerky motion comes and it stops vehicle immediately which is also uh, should be avoided which is there we should try to apply this kind of brakes when speed of operation is more than 400 rpm lesser than that these brakes are not showing the very good performance and it need to be supplemented with the some other brake materials. So, what we say the observation from uh, this slide is that coefficient of friction decreases as a velocity increases, but there is a limit it is not continuously keep going down and continuously decreasing it is reaching to one steady state condition. And if I uh, remember kinetic coefficient of friction and uh, static coefficient of friction we say that static coefficient of friction we can calculate at the first point at the just the start and kinetic coefficient of friction when it is comes uh, reached to the steady state condition. But difference in the that coefficient of friction is almost um, 6 to 8 times we say that coefficient of friction at the static level is a suppose 0 0.8 and kinetic coefficient of friction turn out to be 0 0.1 and whenever there is a large difference between static coefficient of friction and uh, kinetic coefficient of friction there is a possibility of friction instability. We will drive mathematical equation and try to find out how this variation is affecting the result. But before coming to that um, I have uh, some more examples available from the literature. So, this, the, uh, this figure shows coefficient of friction variation this says that even the sliding speed with increase in sliding speed the coefficient of friction is increasing which is amazing um, we never uh, feel uh, during the experiment that this happens, but it turned out to be this is a micro or nano level study which was performed on the laid block versus steel and indium block versus steel. Shows that when you are pushing one block on other block even though applied force is a lesser than static friction force there will be some micro slip that is why uh, the uh, speed is shown here in tennis to minus 9 mm per second which is very low negligible we cannot be detecting by naked eyes. In that case coefficient of friction is continuously increasing ideally we believe that coefficient of friction remain stationary or a static value or the start because we are not able to detect this so low velocity in common experiments which we perform in the lab and after a certain uh, speed it reaches to a static condition and after that there is a decrease. So, this micro um, uh, sliding really if it is required in our micro machines we need to consider the how velocity is affecting coefficient of friction and these are uh, just opposite the coulomb said clearly coefficient of friction does not depend on sliding speed but this kind of uh, micro experiments they are uh, on my uh, experiment which performed on micro scale they clearly show that coefficient of friction depends on velocity. And of course, we know that static coefficient friction and kinetic coefficient friction we are taking only a two point value, but there will be some gradual change it cannot that uh, static coefficient friction is uh, uh, 0.5 and suddenly it reaches to 0.2 it will not be two point it will be some linear curve or some uh, parabolic or some exponential curve, 
which need to be accounted when we talk about the friction instability, when we want to operate the machine in that zone or in that domain. Now, why this kind of phenomena really happens? Couple of uh, hypotheses are there, we say that interlocking of asperities during <coughs> stiff flip phenomena. If the operating speed is low, what will happen? We push block, asperities are in a contact, after some resistance block will start sliding. It will climb up on the some asperities, but after that again it will come down. Then there will be lesser coefficient of friction. Then again some asperities will come, again it will climb up, coefficient of friction again will vary. So, if we apply once force, after that we do not um, uh, apply force, when we push block, it will climb up, it reaches to static condition and we leave it, the block will not stop there, at. it will move down to some value and then slowly it will come to stationary. Or in other words, what we are saying that when we are applying force and uh, it is overcoming a static coefficient of friction or a static force, then it will be having lesser kinetic uh, force plus some inertia plus some uh, velocity to that block. We will come to that when we study or we when we describe or the mathematical relation. A similar phenomena will occur when there is addition or adhesive component or the two components are getting welded at asperities. When you push it and leave it, what will happen? The um, uh, junction will be broken or shear and after some again they will be formed. And uh, last is the elastrostatic charges, there is a molecular attraction and they may not be making uh, cold junction, but they have uh, attraction force that will broken and again uh, reform, again broken and again reform. These uh, three mechanisms can describe why a strict slip phenomena happens if we are trying to operate machine in very low speed domain. If you are operating machine at a very high speed domain, some other instability comes, then in that case friction instability does not come, but the low speed operation friction instability is a dominated and we need to cure it, we need to avoid it either using active control system or some lubrication mechanism. You say that to avoid this phenomena, either increase operating speed, that means if I want to operate the machine at the 100 rpm. I should redesign in a such a manner the operating speed is going beyond 100 rpm or maybe it is reaching to 150 or 175 and we need to redesign the system in a such a manner. New design is avoiding the friction instability in every sense. And other way is they try to reduce uh, mu s and mu k, maybe you make or uh, you choose a tribal pair which have a lower difference between a static coefficient of friction and kinetic coefficient of friction. Change a uh, material or you introduce some lubricant because in uh, introduction of lubricant or forced lubrication will reduce this coefficient of friction and uh, 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 difference between the static coefficient of friction and kinetic coefficient of friction. I can uh, give a very typical example of journal bearing. When a journal bearing or particularly under radial load operates in as a fully developed condition, coefficient of friction is very, very low, maybe say 0 0.001, but when it is during a start and a stop, if there are no modi uh, friction modifier available, then starting coefficient of friction will be very high, it may be even a 0 0.1, 0 0.15. So, difference in a steady coefficient of friction is a 0 0.1 or maybe say ranging between 0 0.1 to 1 0.15 while we are coming to the fully developed uh, aerodynamic bearing or fully developed uh, journal bearing, coefficient of friction is reduced to 0 0.001, the huge difference between static coefficient of friction and kinetic coefficient of friction. And if you want to operate really that uh, journal bearing or aerodynamic bearing at the lower speed operation, surely there will be contact, no contact, contact, no contact, contact, no contact. There will be jump phenomena, there will be continuous variation in a position of the shaft. So, we try to avoid it to give us slightly uh, more detail about this, we will take one example, we say assume there is an assembly and there is a block, block has a mass m, artificially we are assuming there is some sort of viscous damper and there is a some spring stiffness, spring and damper are connected to assembly or in other words when we are pushing this block related to the stationary surface this force will be um, constrained due to the stiffness and damping force. 
which is a very common machine element or is almost all machine element have a this kind of a stiffness and damping coefficient, damping coefficient can be very low, can be high depends on how the system is arranged. We are talking about the viscous damping, we can replace for simplicity when the coulomb damping expressions will remain same or uh, it can be interpreted in that way. Now, we are saying that unbalance will come if there is a difference between a steady coefficient of friction and kind of dynamic coefficient of friction or kinetic coefficient of friction what will happen? There will be a balance force, we have supplied friction force equal to static force which is really required to start sliding on the block. Once the sliding start then friction resistance is coming down is reduced this will give us unbalanced force that unbalanced force will initiate acceleration will induce acceleration in the block. As there is acceleration naturally velocity will increase till balance force is nullified. Once it happens there is again there is a possibility of sticking and that is why the we say that eventually block m will come to the rest or mass m will come to the rest. If I plot displacement velocity and acceleration diagrams what we get? You can see this displacement is coming uh, increasing to a certain value where the equilibrium force is uh, forcing block to be at some position away from its initial position and see the velocity you are able to see the velocity reaches to a peak value and then drops back. Well, acceleration start building I am just taking this point as initial uh, initial push given to the um, block and after that uh, when it is a started sliding then acceleration is going up to a certain level and then again decreasing or going to the negative side and finally coming to the rest. So, this kind of behavior uh, is uh, observed when we push block right to the one surface and stop or stop supplying the force we give force equal to force required to start sliding the block. And uh, as uh, we have attached one uh, viscous damper and um, stiffness we can say overall behavior of this stick slip uh, behavior of the system depends on the system <coughs> stiffness and system damping and the difference between force required for sliding and force required for continuous sliding. So, overall uh, performance will depend on this. Now, to elaborate uh, this um, this kind of behavior we can take simple example of um, very simple example in this case there we are saying that there is a x direction is sliding speed and y direction there is a friction force f s and f c is shown over here f s is a static coefficient of uh, f x is a static friction force f c is a force required for uh, uh, sliding or continuous sliding or when uh, block is started sliding. We can uh, consider two cases. This is the first case when we are assuming a, a ideal case. Initially, there is a high static coefficient, uh, high static coefficient of friction that makes high friction force, and then subsequently there is a lesser friction force. So that's why there is an abrupt change. We have supply more, then it comes to the zero and not zero. It is equal to F C, and that continues. This is the ideal case, and that's why we are saying that um, this is the only stiction immediately the junction are broken and the block starts sliding. While we can consider other case where static force is initially F s and reaching slowly slowly to the kinetic um, friction force that means, there is a linear profile it is not immediate it is a linearly varying from uh, initially high value to some certain F c value and there is um, decrease and we do a reverse uh, operation and the same thing is going to happen when we do the reverse side loading. 
we can consider uh, this case this is the ideal case it does not show any problem, but we can consider this case which will show under which condition system will be instable or uh, friction will induce instability. To consider this in a um, uh, right manner, we will start with a common equation which we generally use for the damp vibration. We know this is a um, second order equation or partial differential equation uh, can be said, but uh, here we are using only x, we are taking only the one direction. So, it can be converted in differential equation. M is a mass, C is a damping force, my is viscous damping force and K is a system uh, stiffness or a stiffness which is attaching the block. We can non dimensionalize it, so that we can um, interpret in much better manner. We say there is a damping factor which is a ratio of damping coefficient divided by critical damping. Natural frequency is a ratio on uh, the square root of ratio of K by M that uh, is stiffness by mass. When we use uh, this expression, we can rearrange this first equation to this equation. Now, we know the solutions are available uh, for this kind of equation and uh, they are categorized in uh, three categories case 1, case 2, case 3 based on the, what is the value of zeta. It is a zeta lesser than 1 that is known as under damped system and solution or for x is generally in terms of uh, t is given as uh, some constant exponential decay in the magnitude and then uh, in trigonometry terms. We can write in terms of sin plus cos or here we have written a some phase angle. So, that we can express either in the sin or in cos term. Case 2 is uh, over damped with the zeta is greater than 1. Here we can see exponentially both the terms are um, going to be negative side. So, this will be continuous decay, this will be continuous decay and the third case uh, when zeta is equal to 1 that is the boundary case. We are able to see that this it will take one period time to stop the vibration. If we disturb one any block, any system, any um, component it will come to the rest after one period, one complete cycle. While in case of the over dam, it does not ensure that there is a possible that it will be damped immediately without taking much time or it may take slightly longer time or magnitudes may be slightly longer time depending on the overall characteristics. While in the first case shows that clearly there is a sinusoidal term, there is a periodic term that means it will keep going uh, getting some oscillation, but at the later and uh, lesser and lesser magnitude. There will be reduction in amplitude of initial disturbance. <coughs> but it will continue over the number of cycles. We generally use the logarithmic decrement expression to find out what is going to happen to this system. Now, in this case particularly zeta is important parameter for us shows that always zeta is positive. We are not consider here zeta as a negative, we are not consider negative damping at all, but there is a possibility of negative damping even though physics does not permit us to say what is the negative damping, how heat generation, how energy generation will happen without, without a, um, any input, but mathematically we can interpret it and we can show why the friction instability occurs. Just to uh, elaborate that what I am saying uh, that there are two cases when it is a positive damping, there is another case the negative damping. And uh, in the both the case uh, displacement is shown on the vertical x, y x and time is shown on uh, horizontal x. When the damping is uh, positive, you can see even the amplitude is initially high and of course, in this both the cases we are considering under damped where the zeta is lesser than 1 right? and in this case zeta is lesser than 0 even. So, positive damping uh, zeta is lesser than 1 is under damp condition the uh, displacement goes on a maximum value comes back to minimum value in the negative side and opposite side. Then next uh, cycle it goes again to high value, but uh, lower than first cycle uh, damping and we are assuming this is a natural damping is not a forced uh, damping system. 
and it keeps going on and finally, it reaches to some stationary condition at which this 0 is initial condition it will reach to 0 condition. Well, coming the negative damping even though it is start from the 0 it reaches to the some max value then in next cycle this value increases and subsequently this value keep on increasing till a final knock between the component occurs or impact between two component occurs or shock between two component occurs which will make a lot of noise which uh, will uh, reduce the life of component and may cause a fracture of the component. If you say that cast iron shaft uh, cast iron block is there and we are using some uh, ceramic uh, uh, component against the cast iron and we experience the negative damping naturally cast iron will uh, break or ceramic block will break because they have a low fracture toughness and uh, failure will occur. So, that is why we should avoid this kind of negative damping as far as possible otherwise we need to redesign the system. So, that this can be avoided to consider this uh, further in detail let us uh, take a force damp vibration case this is the same as we have described in uh, earlier case except the last uh, term or the right hand side term which is a show the external force as the function of time. Uh, this force is varying with the time here we are trying to consider um, F as a friction force. When we consider friction force naturally a negative term will be a negative sign need to be included in this case. This is not um, uh, to uh, the making the motion it is a resisting motion uh, we know the friction force resists the motion that is what the negative sign has been uh, introduced over here and we need to find out the expression for F of how the friction force is varying with the time. We initially consider two cases when the friction force was emitted uh, changing from one position to another position changing from F s to F c. In this case we are assuming that there is a some sort of linear profile it changes gradually. It is not immediately uh, happening from F s to F c to, uh, to uh, accept that profile we can say F t is a function of F s is a stationary force or is a force required for the just initiating slide minus some uh, lambda some parameter and velocity right which is reasonably good for us to understand uh, from this angle we know that as the velocity is increasing or velocity is decreasing how the question of how the friction force will vary and once we know that we can find out whether there will be any effect of this force on vibration phenomena of system or not that will be helpful to us. Now, we introduce this uh, we say that in this equation we uh, instead of writing f t force uh, function of the, as a function of t time we have written f s minus uh, lambda d x by d t. We can rearrange this equation keeping f s on right hand side and clubbing d x term with a c, uh, d x term we say the c minus lambda uh, d x by d t. So, this will uh, give us equation now we, uh, we can uh, find out the answers for this here m is a block to be moved against the stationary surface this is the acceleration term which um, if initially disturbed how long this term will remain and what will be magnitude of that and we assume the initial disturbance force or a disturbing force is f s or maybe continuously be applying of this force f s what will happen in during the um, what kind of motion will occur and uh, how result will affect. Here the stiffness is also accounted many times we find difficulty in estimating the stiffness. So, what we do we write equation we find out the solution and uh, based on some parameter some fraction we can use a uh, scaling factor or a correction factor like alpha beta gamma introduce uh, this factor to get a continuous reliable results. In other words, we do first theoretical calculation. So, uh, evaluate the expression, try to match with experimental results, find out some correlation parameters, and uh, subsequently to that, we try to get the results matching for the subsequent experiments. That means, first few experiments will give us uh, those parameters, and subsequent to that, whatever we do experimentally, we should be able to estimate directly from the expression that it will uh, or uh, ultimately that is going to reduce the number of experiments it is going to help us right. So, in this case is that if the system damping is slow think over 
the system damping C is a lesser than lambda. There is a possibility the system damping is lesser than um, uh, lambda many times we do not have uh, damping uh, available or uh, materials are not able to damp uh, vibration and uh, decrement in uh, friction force is uh, significant that means, lambda is much larger than C. So, in that case what will happen is this will turn out to be negative. If is this turn out to be negative that is going to initiate sliding or in this is going to initiate instability or introduce uh, instability in sliding operation. So, if I um, uh, revise I think over back to the expression what we are going to get is uh, x is equal to some constant uh, e power zeta omega uh, n as a natural frequency in time we are trying to find out what will be the um, effect on the magnitude with the time and this is um, periodic term that is a sign term with a some phase angle zeta here we are assuming the lesser than 1 it may uh, overall expression. Now, if this zeta is decided based on this c minus lambda divided by 2 square root uh, 2 under square m into k m is not going to change, k is not going to change, c is not going to change, it is only the lambda which decides and that is depending on the how steady coefficient of friction is getting or uh, converging to the uh, kinetic coefficient of friction. If there is a huge variation, the steady coefficient of friction is maybe say 0 0.3, 0 0.4 and uh, kinetic coefficient of friction turn out to be 0 0.05 or 0 0.1, there is a huge difference. Naturally, there will be a good value or finite value of the lambda which may be more than or greater than this uh, c that is going to introduce instability that is a major problem for us. So, we should uh, uh, look at in that and uh, we try to avoid uh, at least if we are able to see this expression if we are able to find out c of the system using model analysis or some other technique and we are able to estimate the behavior of friction pair where um, static friction force has been plotted with a velocity and we find that there is a large variation and whatever the operating uh, domain we have, operating speed we have, uh, we require if in that case the lambda value is very high then we should avoid it. So, uh, with this uh, I, I believe that you are getting a feel of uh, how coefficient of friction is important for us or uh, why we want to keep this uh, gap to a minimum value. So, that results are uh, favorable to us and we can avoid instability as uh, mentioned clearly in our uh, earliest slides that if the zeta value is lesser than uh, 1 then there will be periodic motion and um, this zeta value turn out to be negative to, as uh, was uh, indicated in earlier slides then there will be um, instability and there will be knock and there will be a noise generation and that will cause some problem to us. Now, this is uh, what uh, we are showing over here. If I take a very small variation in uh, C and uh, lambda, I am assuming that uh, lambda is almost reaching to the C value slightly more than C value. You can see the friction instability here it is going up first coming down and maybe this data is missing here that is why the straight line is coming over here. So, if I get intermediate data some data will come over somewhere here that will uh, increase magnitude to some level and that shows that first displacement is a certain unit may say 0 0.65, 0 0.64 and if this missing data is uh, can be collected back it will go slightly more than that and further slightly more than that right. So, magnitude is changing slowly slowly and before that we op, uh, hold the operation or able to overcome this then system will remain st stable will not make much noise, but if you are not able to control on that then system is going to make a lot of noise is going to um, uh, hamper the operation or um, uh, lose is uh, main function. So, we can say that uh, increase the system damping is one of the possible solution increase the value of C itself. If you do not have much control on the friction or uh, friction pair or I am not able to uh, provide uh, 
uh, lubricant because of one reason or for because of some other reason. Like many times we are not able to uh, give a lubricant to the uh, machine related to the textile operation because we know the textiles will get affected with the um, uh, lubricant and it should be avoided. However, if it is uh, uh, possible that uh, we can lubricate the surface, then it will be always preferable to uh, go ahead with the lubrication and ensure that friction force um, uh, difference between static coefficient of friction and kinetic coefficient of friction is decreased. This is the reason why when we are mentioning about uh, we have given example of hydrodynamic bearing. In hydrodynamic bearing I mentioned that um, at a staff coefficient of friction may be very low 0.1 to 0.15 and when we are operating it at the fully developed condition coefficient of friction may be 0 0.001 there is a huge difference. If we operate that machine at a very low speed naturally uh, we are going to face problem there will be more wear there will be more knocking of the shaft versus uh, shaft over the bearing surface. But if we are able to provide some other mean to separate shaft and the bearing initially which happens many times we use a hydrostatic uh, lubrication mechanism, we provide lubricant to separate two surfaces and then start uh, shaft rotation. Otherwise, there is a more possibility of failure or more possibility of knocking, more possibility of noise. To avoid that we do that, uh, sometime even in hydrodynamic bearing we use a magnetic levitation mechanism that we use a permanent magnet or the start or the where the shaft surface is going to touch the bearing surface. We use a magnet piece there or maybe say some short arc maybe 30 degree to 60 degree to levitate the shaft slightly up. So, that there is no contact and uh, when the shaft is start rotating it will develop a full film lubrication mechanism and coefficient of friction will be almost same 0.001 at the starting 0.001 at the um, um, later operation may be slightly more than that. So, this kind of mechanisms are important when we understand what is really happening in a system we can avoid it. So, I have given a couple of example on how to avoid the friction instability in um, uh, bearings. Similarly, we will uh, uh, detail uh, this kind of topic and when we will uh, design the uh, uh, brake system how to design a brake system and how to avoid the squealing or uh, noising or slipping uh, slippage of a uh, brake shoe against the disc. So, we will continue with um, um, we will stop over here on the friction topic uh, we will be starting a new topic on the next turn that will be the wear phenomena or wear mechanisms those will be different operations. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.